Hi, good evening. I'm Anna Olson here on Insights into Consciousness and on A1R, A1R Radio. I'm your host tonight for this segment. And tonight I am winging it. I'm just going to talk about whatever the guides tell me to talk about. I do have a couple things prepared. Uh, the first thing I wanted to go over is when our new moon and full moon is and what that will look like. And then I want to go over this week's uh, herb or flower and a stone or crystal. And then I want to go over how to read for yourself as a practice for daily guidance or even weekly guidance or however it is that you want to do that. Some people start out weekly, monthly, bi-monthly, and then they can increase as they get better or as they get more used to it. Um, and then I'm also going to do a watcher's uh, reading question and answer and how I got that answer. So I'm really starting to implement how I do my readings and how other people can do their own readings at home. Because I really love to teach other people how to get started on doing this for themselves because there are so many people who want readings. I can't always fit everybody into my weekly schedule and we can't always answer every single call on our shows, although we would absolutely love to. Um, so I would just love to do a few um, of the questions that my guides will tell me that people will be needing to ask who will be viewing tonight or listening. And then I will answer those on the air and I'll tell you how I got it. So first off, um, new moon is going to be January 24th, and we're in 2020 now. So we're going to have a new moon in Aquarius. What that means is a good time to commit to your personal goals, which is fantastic because we're in January and there's a lot of goal setting and people really trying to set some goals. Now, when we're doing this personal goal setting, we want it to be something that's a little outside the box, something that we're not used to doing at this time of year, because Aquarius is all about stepping out of your comfort zone. And the first thing that you want, you're going to want to do during the Aquarius full uh, new moon, excuse me, the new moon is you're going to want to really think about what it is that will hit the hardest to set you in the direction you want to go in. So we're not talking about, Oh, I want to go back to the gym again. Um, although I haven't been for six months and, uh, I'll just follow that, uh, that old goal that I know I should be doing. But no, we're not going to do any of the boring stuff. We want big stuff. We want, Oh, I'm going to call and get an interview with this place that I've been thinking about and dreaming about for five years. I want to go take this art class and see if I can maybe go and sell some of my art. I want to, you know, think outside the box. I want to go to this new place I've never been to, travel to this new country I've never been to, save for a trip uh, to a place I've never been that I've been dreaming about for a while. We want all of the things that we have been trying, trying or committing to focus on for a long time. We want to do the big stuff this new moon. We want to plant those seeds, okay? So the other thing about the new moon, January 24th in Aquarius is that we want to um, have surgeries um, during the waning moon. That's the best time. Now, there are guides to every day of the month of the year, of the century, and it will tell you exactly where you should not have a surgery that day. And it's a good guide to follow. I've had, um, uh, I think, over seven surgeries now just on basic stuff, nothing too scary, but... Um, Every time I've had a surgery, um, I, I've, well, in the past five years or so, I've looked at the calendar uh, for the new moon, the full moon, um, where it is in the, on the horoscope, on the, you know, where space is at that time, where the planets are, and there's a specific guide. Uh, it's a good idea to follow it. I have noticed that I recover better when I do it this way. I, I visualize anyway, and that helps me with recovery, but um, it's always a good way to know when to schedule a surgery that is important so the upcoming full moon is going to be on february 9th this is going to be our full moon in leo and on the full moon february 9th this is a no way on your surgeries do not have a surgery on this day you're going to want to do those surgeries on the waning moon 
Um, the next day is fine, February 10th, but you're going to want to, again, look at the guide for the organs. You can find those online. Um, there's a ton of guides about which organs or um, places to do surgeries on what days. Um, and then there's a definite no on some days. Um, February 9th is a no-go on surgery in general. But the, this upcoming full moon in Leo, this is a fire sign. So this, again, it's really convenient to have this full moon in Leo right after we have a new moon in Aquarius because you're going to set all those great goals that you're, you know, personal goals that are kind of outside the box that are a little bit more exciting. You know, you're stretching yourself a little bit more, do these. And then our full moon in Leo, when we're going to be really releasing the old stuff and letting them bloom, that's going to be a fire sign full moon, which means it's kind of like setting that fire under us and motivating us to really get things done. So it's a really good next couple of, um, months that we're going to be having for setting some goals in general. Um, so now's a good time. Don't burn yourself out though. The same, um, you know, the double-edged sword with Leo being a fire sign is that you can't overdo it. So we don't want to set all these goals and do all this stuff and get all motivated, but burn ourselves out uh, with that same fire. So regulate it, balance it out a um, little bit at a time um, within reason. You know, we don't want to go too crazy. We don't want to go into debt <laughs> for these goals. We want to make sure that everything is in balance. So this week's herb, now I'm going to do a flower and that's going to be the rose. So roses are um, a herb where if you take the, um, well, it's a flower, but when you take the oil out of a rose, it, um, basically all different oils from different plants and flowers and etc. they have, um, and a frequency on where they can elevate our frequency. So, uh, there's long history, um, in mankind where we have, um, been able to utilize herbs, flowers, and the like for our benefit of the human body. So the rose is the absolute highest frequency. Let's say the essential oil, if you can get it organic. Uh, I know there's a place on Amazon and they sell, you know, rose oil. I think it's like a tiny one for like $55 or $60. And I know that sounds like a lot. It's pricey because they have to put like, I don't know, a thousand pounds of roses or something, the petals into this, um, you know, few drops of oil. But the really great thing about the rose oil is that it is um, the most powerful oil. If it's a true pure essential oil that we can use and utilize for our well-being and our good. It is a very magnifying, powerful uh, flower, the petals, um, smelling them, having them around you. There's a lot of energy in mediumship and the spirit world where spirits will speak through the image or the smell of roses. It is such a highly potent, um, high-frequency flower and, um, you know, it's a weed, this, this, um, it's a, it's a bush that comes from a weed and, uh, it has a very strong will, high frequency. I, um, know of a few people who are very successful business owners who, um, put a really good, strong rose water in a, uh, weed killing container from like a, you know, a hardware store. And they sprayed around the, the circumference of their property because, it elevates the frequency. It is good for feng shui. It's very potent. It is um, good for protection and for magnifying your your um, you know your different goals, personal goals, things that you are intending, um, wanting to manifest. It's a good way to magnify and really make more potent what it is that you're in your intention is. And, um, you can also put in a spray bottle, spray it around a room. Um, you can spray it on your, you, your personage. So you have, you know, that great frequency in your aura. Um, you can use it with intention setting and just things that, you know, you are intending to do with your life or, um, when you're thinking about people around you, you can use it there too, to uh, magnify the purpose and the intention of whatever it is that you're seeking out to do, the goals that you are setting. So that's why I wanted to go over the rose and rose oil, essential oil today. Um, it is great for manifesting and it goes along well with this new moon in Aquarius and the full moon in Leo. 
and it um, it can be very beneficial for many things. I do suggest you really research this one. It's a fantastic flower. It's a fantastic way to um, do a lot of intention setting. So um, it also, if you put it in a cream or something that you put on your skin, it will intensify what that does by like a thousand fold. So if you, you use rose oil on your skin, it's like a drop to, I, I don't know, like a liter of lotion or skin cream or something, but it is so good for so many things just on the skin, the hair, um, and wearing it, um, as an essential oil, you know, on the nape of the neck or behind the ears there's all these different uses for it and it does all these specific things people that really tend to be operating at a denser consciousness tend to love the smell of this pure organic essential oil because they need it and because uh they can sense that they need that extra push and that that um, wonderful higher frequency it's very helpful for emotional well-being if you're feeling under the weather during the winter, if you're in the snow, you haven't had sunshine, it's a great way to magnify a good mood when you're feeling good. It's kind of like quartz crystal. When you're just feeling really good, you want to wear a quartz crystal. It will magnify whatever it is that you're putting out there and it will magnify the frequency. So it will make it exponentially better and more powerful. Um, also, I really wanted to focus on a stone of crystal and this week's is the rose quartz. Now we know that rose quartz is an excellent stone for love and for attracting love or for working on your relationship or just any relationship, the love that people share or the love that you're sending out to others. You wear uh, rose quartz on your heart. You'll be able to be more aligned with that um, heart chakra. It's a heart chakra stone, stone for love frequency. Great to pair with your rose essential oil or rose petals or roses that you put on your table in a vase. Uh, this is a great stone to uh, magnify those intentions for good relationships, refreshers in relationships, or to attract a very healthy, loving relationship. So another thing that you can do is pair up a, a nice uh, rose quartz stone a crystal on your nightstand by your bed with a, an amethyst and those together can be very conducive to um, great sleep and um, dreaming about the you know focusing on healthy relationships attracting healthy relationships filtering out all of the bad stuff in your electromagnetic field and you can also put it under your bed where your heart chakra would be when you lay down to go to sleep at night those are two places you can test it out and see where you'd like to place the stones the amethyst tends to also cleanse the rose quartz when it's by it so that's really nice you could just go and charge it uh, after it's been cleansed by its amethyst. So there's a little tip for better sleep and attracting love. Now I really want to go over how to read for yourself as a practice for daily guidance. And, you know, I say daily guidance. Now, of course, it's just whenever you need the guidance, whether that be daily, weekly, monthly, it's up to you. I really love doing a daily card pool. At first, it can be a little hard to pull for yourself. So it's good to practice. And I really, really love the fairy tarot. Um, this is a fairy deck that has a full tarot arcana in it. And it also has this beautiful guidebook. It has some great art, um, a great description on each card. In case you're starting out and you're new at this, it'll help to guide you to doing this a little more efficiently, especially for yourself. You could also start, you know, doing readings for other people if you want to, your family members. You can pull a card for your family members, if whether they're there or not, um, putting an intention out there for them that's positive, loving, protective, same with yourself. Um, you you go into your deities. Who, who are your deities? You're going to start out by um, asking, you know, if you're working with the angel realm, let's say you want to um, ask Archangel Michael, Michelle, you want to ask, um, you know, your angel Gabriel, you pick your deities and you focus on that. You're going to ask questions. You're going to ask a question. You're going to be, first of all, grounded, do some meditation. You can research what kind of meditation you'd like to personally do. And 
really ground yourself so that you're feeling that divine light coming through you and you know that you are now um, an oracle of sorts you are now a connection between heaven and earth your heart chakra is now a connection between heaven and earth and you're going to shuffle the cards while you're thinking about the question now I would usually do this on myself but today I would really like to focus on my viewers and my listeners and really focus on a question that they may have today so my guides will tell me exactly who will be listening and what their question will be this can also apply to more than one person so if you're listening with a friend it may be for both of you um, it, it isn't always just an answer for one person a reading can be for more than one person even though it's catered or uniquely for one person it can also apply to somebody else um, so remember that these can be dual purpose um, and the first question that I'm getting is um, will I be with my partner long term this is a common question but I'm getting that this is specifically for somebody who is of african-american descent and um, it's about a man who is of african-american descent and he's tall thin and um, very driven person he tends to like to uh, travel quite a bit or move around quite a bit he is definitely a fun um, partner he is lively and likes to make you laugh a lot so I'm seeing this man in my mind and the question is will he be with me long term the answer I'm going to um, think about and ask the guides and, and respectfully thank them before they even give me the answer um, and then I'm going to shuffle my cards so I have these here and I'm shuffling them as I think of the question and I've already cleansed and sort of um, gotten out any old energy out of the cards so I'm going to shuffle them and pull one I have an ego card so this is kind of what I was suspecting before I pulled the card was that this guy um, you know his he, he run his ego kind of he kind of runs away with his ego a little bit too much I will just read it and then I'll show you the picture or I'll show you the picture first on the front if you want to just kind of look at this this is the number 15 and it's the ego so I will read the description. The illusion of being trapped, placing too much importance on material items and getting caught up in fear and worry. So the difference between um, you and your significant other, your partner, this man that I was describing, the, the difference is that he is more free-spirited. You are more uh, really a, a worrier kind of worrying about where is this going to go, what are, where, where is it going. He's more like, well, we'll just see. Let's not worry about it. He may um, work where he has to go out of town a lot. Maybe he has to travel. And his state of mind is he will take things as they come. He's not going to create any problems when there are none. And that's the way he's looking at it. He's not disrespectful to you at all. He just really doesn't want to worry about things that aren't happening. So while you need a lot of this stability and reassurance, um, because of, you know, it's just like you're passing your, your personality, nothing wrong with that. Um, but while you're needing all this, you know, basically him telling you, oh, I'm going to be here. This is where it's going. I promise you this and that. He's just like thinking, I just want to have fun. I just want to see where this takes us. And, um, He's kind of flying by the seat of his pants and free spirited, uh, doesn't worry too much about the details like that. Um, I see that it would be a very long relationship with him that as long as the worrying doesn't get in the way, because this is the thing. Sometimes what we fear we create because we're not letting it go. And I think it's more about catering to your insecurities and what it is that you're really worried about. Are you placing a lot of your worries from a past relationship or um, are you placing worries from something that you saw someone you love go through um, on him and your relationship? You knew what he did when you got together with him. You knew what his job was. You knew he was going to be out of town. You understood these things and you agreed to go ahead and continue a serious relationship with him. He travels. He is a fun-loving person. I know that he can also be a little bit flighty, 
But it's important to remember that, yes, he has a bit of an ego. It's partially, you know, he has a high self-confidence. Um, he does, he's very social. Um, he gets along well with people. That is how he was raised. Um, that doesn't mean he's going to cheat on you. That also doesn't mean that things aren't going to work out because somebody's going to come and take him away from you. It just means that that's his personality and that's like how he likes to be social and, and um, talk to other people. So my answer to your question, will you be together long term, is yes, as long as you settle down and stop bugging him about the little things because he needs a break. You knew these things about him when you got together with him and I'm going to lovingly tell you that that is on you, not him. You need to stop picking at him because he is doing everything he told you originally he was going to be doing. He's not doing anything wrong. And if you want him to go off with somebody else and leave, then keep running him crazy. So um, I'm going to lovingly tell you to stop it and wag my finger just a little bit and say, um, I understand your feelings, but you're going to need to stop pushing him away if you want things to be good for as long as you're with him and you want things to continue. So the answer is it's really up to you as well that you, um, as long as you can deal with your insecurities and do that internal work and not make it about him, you will be together with him for 20 plus years and it will be a lot of fun. And yes, he will start to settle down. He will eventually retire after some time and you guys will be able to really have a daily relationship. Remember that you also are not ready for a daily relationship either. You've got all your stuff going on with kids and everything else. And that's where your attention is. And this is why it's working out so well with him. Let it work out the way it is and just go more along with his view of things that, you know, let's just see what happens. Let's just have fun where we are right now. So that's the first question. Now, if I wanted to do this uh, reading on my own, and that was my question, and I get the ego card, and I look at it, and I meditate on it, and I think, okay, I think that this is what it means. I think that this means that this guy has a big, a big ego, and blah, 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 and I'm coming up with all these things. Um, one thing that you can do, you can look at the number, which is 15, and you can also look at the possibility that 15 also represents the number six because one plus five is six. That is also a possibility. You can look at the meaning behind the both numbers, 15 and six. You can also see if it resonates with anything in your life. Were you the age 15 when something happened in your life where maybe that built some insecurities? Did something happen with this person um, when they were 15? Does 15 represent somebody's birthday, the age of a child? the uh, number of weeks, the number of years, you know, look, really stop and pay attention to what it's reflecting and how it's representing your story. I then would take the book and see if it adds anything or if it just confirms what I was originally thinking. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to look for ego um, 15, uh, card number 15. I open it right up to ego and I'm going to read what it says in the book. It says happiness can be elusive if you're not clear on your own priorities, motivations, and behaviors. Now, I didn't memorize this, but look at what I got. Look at what's coming out of the book for this card. Taking time for self-reflection allows you the opportunity to experience great personal epiphanies and practice self-forgiveness. See the truth of who you are. Release those aspects that no longer serve you. Let go of guilt, fear, and blame. Have compassion for yourself. Look in the mirror and tell yourself, I love you for being divinely perfect in this moment. Isn't that a beautiful thing to tell somebody to do? I mean, that's just a great self-love, self-care thing. Detox from harmful foods, substances, or people. Confront your fears and release yourself from any limitations or self-imposed traps self-imposed traps like pushing somebody away because of your own insecurities when you could otherwise be very happy with them self-imposed traps give yourself permission to be free free of worry free of blame free of um constantly ruminating or needing to know what's going on with somebody driving them crazy our fairy friends stand before a traditional celtic belting fire a springtime sacred ceremony to release the old that is guilt, fear, blame, and other products of the ego, and welcome the new. Okay, so 
this is also um, an additional meaning of this card, which is determining what is the cause and what is the symptom, placing too much importance on material items or getting caught up in fear and worry or dependency or addiction. So I really did get a vibe of a dependency on this relationship rather than a free loving spirited relationship that is based on a very stable um, two people that are, are well balanced on their own without needing somebody or need to lean on somebody. It's lacking in, you know, stability. Um, this is why I wanted the self care in there and everything else. So let's go on to the next question and I will give it an answer and how I got that answer. So let's see. The next one is going to be, I'm going to listen to my guides real quick while I'm shuffling the cards. And, um, I would really like to try a quick card pull. Um, will my job, um, will my career be long term in this field? Okay, so I got the King of Autumn, and um, this is a really beautiful card. I only have a few seconds, so I'm going to hurry up. But this is the King of Autumn. I love this card. Um, I got compassionate, accomplished, charismatic, and gifted. So you are all those things. Compassionate, accomplished, charismatic, and gifted. Be assertive to what you know is right. Everything is going to be going your way. A good person or company to work for. So that's what this card is. And I can go ahead and um, look in the book later on and see if it applies. But it's basically a yes. You'll be in this career for a long time. You'll be very successful. Believe in yourself and you'll do great. So um, it's a good company to work for and you're in the right place. So darn it, only 30 seconds left, but um, please reach me and I will be happy to do a reading for you. I can also teach you how to do the, these readings yourself. So you can start a business or do them for yourself or your friends, your family, those close to you. You can reach me at AnnaOlsonIntuitive.com and you can also schedule an appointment immediately and let me know if you'd like to on the phone or in person um, here on the Central Coast, California. You can also do it on the phone, so let me know. You can go to my website, AnnaOlsonIntuitive.com. It's at the bottom of the screen. And you can click on Schedule an Appointment and click the Schedule button or the Book Now button, button and it will take you straight to my calendar and you can book with me and let me know if you'd like it on the phone or in person.